Dad, your we know this is it's something yeah. there. You go. We know one of your faults is the club gets too far behind you on yeah. the way back. However, if you try to stop it getting behind by your hands going out this way, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And you're going to put the hands too far in front of you, create more of a shanky situation. So that takeaway, yeah, if I'm being honest, is behind you a little bit. But yeah. it's not disastrous, like sort of way behind here, okay? You're able to hinge the wrist and so on, absolutely fine. That is a good position. I mean, the club itself is kind of down towards the golf ball. So it's absolutely fine there in terms of that position, okay? As you go back here now, same again. But it's keeping that right elbow. When you're up here now, that elbow has to start working down into the body. Yeah. If it works this way, now you're not going to see much of a difference in terms of that elbow because it's literally that much different. Yeah. But what you will see now is that club as it comes back down, that club going a bit more out in front of you. As you come into impact position here now, that's kind of your pre-impact position. So from that path, you're either shank or big pull left. And if you're trying to avoid the, the heel of the club, you flip the bottom hand, leave with the toe, to not, and then it just goes long left, and you're in the ball 50, 60 yards, and off it goes. So from here, if that elbow can go down, now as that club comes back in, you see the track into the goal ball there now. Difference in there, you see? That yeah. club now is more in line to where you want to go, and you're going to get more of a strike that you're looking for. And then as you swing through, you can then judge it 54 yards. If honest, is a little bit flicky, but then that'll go in time once you get used to not worrying about shanking it, okay? Yeah. And you get more control of the elbow. As I said, once this elbow has become more and more aware, should we say, or more under control, we yeah. can then start playing about with different trajectories and trying to play those sort of low shots or high shots, okay? Mm. And get with that flick. But for the most part now, just be aware of that right elbow. If you need to be, do that drill where you... Yeah, put your left hand on that bicep slash elbow bit and just make some swings, almost like you're pulling the arm in. Yeah, you might top a few, thin a few. It doesn't matter. All we're trying to do is get away from that elbow and the right arm going too far out. Yeah. So the club now ends up being basically outside over there as opposed to on line with the target line. Yeah. Keep it in, keep it connected. And then simply coming a 50-yard shot, 40-yard shot yeah. is just that less is the torso, turn the arms, go with it. Yeah. If your arms are doing this and that... <laughs> It's very tough, and you rely on, then on a lot of timing. When it's a full shot, you know what that timing is. You can adjust to it. You can make a tweak in here and there, and we're fine. On a 20, 30-yard shot, the arm's not going far enough to get out of position. You sort of lock it in position there and do this. I would, as well, when you're doing your 20-yard shots, not try to get too tense, too stiff. Just allow this arm to go back. This arm wants to kind of just start folding kind of naturally, yeah. even on a sort of 10, 15, 20, 30, 40-yard shot. Don't yeah. just say, oh, here's my 20-yard chip, and I just lock everything, because then you start yeah. getting tense. It's hard to just distance if you're locking yourself. So mm. allow the arm to sort of soften and fold. It just makes it easier to control the club face throughout, so you can then do... 10, 20, 50, 80 shots yeah. with one method, not 45 different swings, not lock yeah. this one, lock this, bend this, twist that. Okay? Yeah. Make sense? Lovely. Good.